that was November 2020 that I first messaged him. And then by January 2021, we got married by proxy. It was a proxy marriage. You had two people get married for you? You did like an avatar Completely marriage. Legal. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi, who is this? Um, my name is Gina. How are you, Gina? I'm I'm doing good. I'm so happy to be talking to you right now. I'm happy to be talking to you too, Gina. What's going on with you? Um, I wanted to tell my story about how me and my husband got married and got together. Yeah, sure. How did it happen? Um, well, so we had a mutual friend, um, and I saw our, my, our mutual friend post him, post my now husband on Instagram. And I was like, oh, he's kind of cute. Uh, whatever. Um, I was dating somebody else, whatever. And then um, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We lived I don't know if that's, a, if, that's a, if that's a whatever. So you were dating somebody else at the time. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> okay, continue. I'll, I'll was. save my questions for the end. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, by the way, we lived in Hawaii. And Hawaii is very, like, if you live there, you live there forever, basically. It's like a, yeah. But I saw this guy that I had a mutual friend with just pop up and move to Germany. And I was like, how does one do that? I am super interested in how this person just moved to Germany. Because I wanted to travel, right? And, um, yeah, I ended up DMing him, like, I want to do what you're doing. And then we just never stopped talking. Um, and then, so that was November 2020 that I first messaged him. And then by January 2021, we got married by proxy. It was a proxy marriage. <laughs> um, okay, so, so to the story so far, your friend posts a picture of a, of a German guy or a guy who moved to Germany. A guy who moved to Germany. Okay, an American guy. He's originally from um, Arizona, and, but he was right. in Hawaii. He so to, you yeah. you just DM'd <laughs> this guy, this mutual friend of yours, and you were like, hey, man, you, you moved to Germany. That looks cool. How'd you do that? And then you guys started talking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then we never um, stopped talking. I mean, you never stopped talking. <laughs> and then, wait, so two months later, you got married by, what does married by proxy mean? So basically, two people stood in for us at our to sign our marriage document. You had two <laughs> people get married for you. Basically, yeah. You did like an avatar. Completely marriage. legal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like it says on our marriage certificate, um, the people that signed it um, for and then our name. Instead of how like our you, signatures, just their signatures. How do you find people to get married for you? Is that like a job? Are there professional brides and grooms? Yeah, um, in Montana, if anybody happens to be interested in this, um, it's a you can look up proxy marriage. I think it's called oh, I can't remember the name. It's like Big Sky, Blue Sky, or something um, in Montana. Yeah, hmm. and hmm. they do it. All right, so a proxy marriage. So you lived in, you were living in Hawaii. He was living in Germany, and you got married. Yeah. But wait, so did you get married before Online. you guys even? Did you get married before you even met? Yes, yes, yeah. Before we met you, in person, yeah. You married a guy before you even met him in person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that must have been some picture your friend posted. I guess so. He was like skateboarding. Um, wow. But yeah, I uh, I married him without meeting him. We were like just talking over FaceTime mostly. And um, yeah, I think we decided on getting married. Like we were like, okay, we're going to get married so that we can be together. Um, we decided, I think, early December. And by January which is funny january 6 2021 is the day that we got married like it was official we got sent like the congratulations everything and then yeah and then i went to go visit my family they lived in a different state and then 
in March, um, I think March 3rd, 2021, I was in Germany living with him. Now, how did your the person you were currently dating respond when you told him that you're going to get married oh. to a man in Germany that you never met? <laughs> I ended up, we ended up breaking up, I think, very early on when I first started talking to my my now husband. My now husband's name is Cody, by the way. Shout out to Cody. He's watching. <laughs> um. Okay, so... Uh, so yeah, how we long broke were up you, how, and then how uh, long were you with how long were you with the person you were dating at the time for? I think almost two years. A year and a half, I think. The two years, wow. somewhere in between that. Almost two years. So I mean listen, like I wanna get there's so much to get into here. Um what was it? I mean, you were dating this guy for what, a year and a half, two years? You had like a pretty established rapport with this guy you were dating what what made you ditch him for the instagram man well um so when covid first hit maybe yeah when covid first hit my then boyfriend got um fired from his job and i that same day he got fired i got hired at a new job so I was making a lot more money. So I was like, okay, I can support you through your journey. I was like trying to figure out what you want to do. And in that time, he kind of went down this like conspiracy theory, like like wormhole and became super like political. Um, he became a Trump supporter and got really into it and was just always trying to fight me about like women's issues and like just the, you know, the world and um i was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt to be honest i was trying to you know maybe he's just in a phase um but he just increasingly got more and more crazy not just like politically but like in our relationship and i was trying but um yeah that one the day we broke up is because he thought that i was cheating on him with um but not in the way that i was (laughs) but in the way that um he thought i was going to someone's house but I wasn't. I was at work. <laughs> Wait. So you were. So you were. So you were like. I was talking uh, to I don't, Cody. You were talking to this other guy while you were talking to him. Yeah. While I was still dating okay. him, but only for like a week or so, and then in that second week, I think we broke up. Now this yeah. uh, ex, did he ever like? He never like hurt you or anything, did he? No. No, he was just kind of something wasn't right up there. <laughs> I think personally. Huh. And he's just you, a little crazy. When and when you throughout the time that you knew him, like before he had lost his job and gone down this conspiracy rabbit hole, did he show any signs of anything that might have kind of like no, uh, you know, given uh, given hints that he was a little little crazy? No, he was. We were actually really good. We were really good. Um, huh. We worked the same job. I met him because he was my boss. <laughs> and then, um, uh, yeah, I ended up getting a better job than him, and he really didn't like that. So that kind of started it, I think. Huh. But other than that, no, we were good. And then that happened. I feel like there's no better way to piss off a patriot than to uh, break up with him in a loped Germany. I know, yeah. But, you know, we're happy now. Like, me and Cody are doing super good. I think we're planning on moving to L.A. Um, So, yeah. Okay, so now you and Cody. uh, You're FaceTiming with him, and you got married by... Okay, so you were in Hawaii, he was in Germany, and then where did the proxy marriage take place? That was in Montana. Why Montana? (laughs) That that's just where the the place was that that does it. That that's does the, the place that with the most like amount this. of people that you can convince. That's the place where the unemployment rate is high <laughs> enough that people can get jobs marrying each other. On behalf, yeah, of I mean it's just that peaceful. <laughs> I shouldn't say anything about the unemployment yeah. rate of Montana. It's probably 
I don't know. I don't know anything about the world. Okay. Why did you marry this guy without meeting him? I feel like we haven't really dived into that. Yeah. Honestly, at the time, um, we were just so similar and we were just getting along. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, we wanted to be together and like at least see each other, you know, but the best way for us to be seeing each other was for us to get married, really, because of COVID and everything. Well, how did you come yeah. to that conclusion? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how we, <laughs> we were crazy Because, kids. you know, the best way for you guys to meet... <laughs> Because, you know, look, you don't have to get married to visit Germany. Yeah, but it was COVID. So, like, they weren't letting Oh, so you did. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they weren't, let they weren't letting people in during COVID, I think. They weren't letting us, like, leave huh. or letting people in. So we were like, you know what? Let's just get married and just try it out. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, divorce. <laughs> Fascinating. Basically. Okay, so 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 you couldn't go to Germany because of COVID, but if you married a German guy, then the rules said that you could. No, so he was in the military. So he he got stationed in Germany, which is what happened. But because right. so if we're married, guy, yeah. then then if then if we're married, then I can go be with my husband. Really. Okay. It was. How long ago? How long have you guys been married for now? Um, two years. All right, so we we beat out. We got Trump married guy. January sixth. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the first year's the hardest they say. So. <laughs> okay, and was that true? Was the first year hard? Yeah, we went through some stuff, but I think mostly we're a pretty healthy relationship. I mean we. We we we're good at communicating, um, which is like the key I think to marriage is communication, and um, you know we like each other very much. So yeah, I think I think the first year was the hardest, but I think now, we're doing you, pretty good. Now, when you first met him, did he like did he live up to the expectations of that first? juicy picture that your mutual friend posted <laughs> um yeah for sure when i first hugged him he was a lot skinnier than i thought he would be <laughs> but he's bulked up now he's pretty buff now so <laughs> well that's good <laughs> um okay so you live in germany now well yeah well right now i'm in maryland because i'm visiting family um, and he's still in Germany, and then he's going to leave Germany, and we're going to, he's going to meet my parents. He hasn't met my parents yet or anything, so he's going to come here you, after he's done in Germany. How did your parents respond to this story? I'm curious what they thought. My mom was like, okay, and then my dad was actually very excited. He was like, woohoo. He was excited. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know. But we we all kind of, all me and my siblings all thought that it was kind of weird that he was like so happy for me. But what do you, you know, think whatever. Because think... my dad's not the type. He's not that type. What do you what how, what do you mean by that type? He's not like the type to be like woohoo. <laughs> That's what he said when I told him. I called him. I was like, Dad, I got married. He said it. He said woohoo. <laughs> So it says you're 24. So you, so you, you got married when you were about 22. Yeah, I was about right. to turn 23. Yeah. All right. Um, how old is he? He's 29 now. He's about okay. to be 30. Uh, what do you what? Tell me about this job. Do you do you still? Is this like a remote gig? Like, how'd you keep this job while you were in Germany? No, I became a housewife <laughs> for two years, which was good and bad, I think. Good, like, so, I got to rest because I was, like, working my ass off in Hawaii to trying to live. And then bad in the sense, like, I I, uh, I want to go back to work. So when we go to L.A., I'm going to go back to work. I'm actually going to work while I'm here in Maryland, but, you know. Yeah, so I, you... For two years, it was not 
got so you got because I remember you said you got a better job than your ex boyfriend, and that was kind of the catalyst yeah. to the end of your relationship. And then you started, yeah. Yeah, and then you moved to Germany like two months later. So this better job that you had, you you must have only had it for like a few months, right? No, so I got the I was a I became a bank teller in February 2020. And that's when my ex got fired. We were working at a Jamba Juice. He got fired at a Jamba Juice. And then um, he, that's when he became, he was unemployed until I think about November. So about the time that we broke up. So I was supporting him that whole time. I mm. almost made a year because I left, I left Hawaii in February. But I didn't quite make a year. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so you were a housewife. So the deal. So the deal was, okay, let's get married. I'm gonna move to Germany, and you're gonna financially support me. Uh, yeah, but that wasn't the plan initially. I think for me, especially, I was like planning on working. Um, that first year, I kind of took to like, you know, um, work on myself I think a little bit more and travel which was like the main thing we wanted to be able to travel all around Europe and stuff so I didn't want my job to get in the way of that when I didn't really need to work I think and then the second year um, I, we were just trying to we were trying to start a family and stuff so um, yeah you guys have kids so I, I didn't work uh, yeah, but it didn't it, it didn't work out a little bit. It didn't work out. Okay. <laughs> is is that part of the future plan? Yeah, kind of. So Cody has a daughter already. Um, there's another crazy story, but um, so I'm happy being stepmom. If I don't end up being able to have like my own biological kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, how old is the kid? She is three. Yeah. And how is it being a stepmom? Well, I haven't, because we've been in Germany, I haven't met her yet. So when we get to the States, when we move officially to the States, then I get to really, you know, play into my role as stepmom. I'm super excited. Super excited. S so you you so you guys have been living in Germany the past two years, right? And where has yep. the where has the daughter been? With her mom, I think in on the East Coast. Okay. I mean yeah, on the East Coast. I don't think I know. <laughs> on the East Coast. So if you guys move to Los Angeles, is the daughter gonna are they gonna trade custody? How's that gonna work? Oh, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> we're gonna okay. figure it out. It's just so okay. hard because of being because we were in Germany. It's been so hard to like really figure it all out. But this year specifically, this year once we get out of Germany officially, I think everything's gonna come together. I'm not really okay. too worried about it. Is being a mom something you've always wanted? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you say that you were a housewife for two years. What I mean, how was that for you? Did you like? Did you like cook and clean? I did a did lot you of, like like what did you what did you kind of do? I did a lot of um, internal healing. I think it was super necessary for me. Um, a lot of like inner child <laughs> healing. A lot of meditation, journaling therapy i did go to school for a while and then um yeah but i, I did, i'm not like for? the academic type um i was getting my associate my like liberal arts associate's degree mm -hmm. but um, um i'm not i'm not that academic type <laughs> so how okay so you were doing a lot of uh journaling and meditating and kind of hanging out and uh yeah. you and Cody was was supporting you. Yeah. 
Shout out to Cody. He, he's in the military. All right, he's you in the army. A bunch of times. Um, how does he like being in the army? Oh wait, so before you answer that, uh, when you guys go back to LA, <laughs> is he still in the military? No, he's getting out. What's he gonna he's do? Getting out. Um, he's gonna join the LAPD, I think. Okay. Because they're uh, hiring, is, they're gonna hire him. <laughs> is that is that a thing? Do a lot of former former military become police officers? Well, yeah, I think because the um, the number of police officers needed has gone up significantly. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. they um, they want to recruit people who have prior experience. I think um, okay. in that kind of area, but really just because they're hiring him, I think is why he's going for it. And what are you planning on doing when 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 we go back to LA? Well. Cause I want to work. I'm trying to get hired at this Starbucks over here just for the time while I'm over here. And then I'm probably just going to end up doing Starbucks in LA and then working from there to like find, you know, the, the career I want. You know what I mean? I think there's more opportunity in LA to do that, to be able to yeah. find a career so yeah, I was. I wanted to. I wanted to know what is your. Do you have dreams for the future or things that you hope for? Yeah, I mean, my my husband's listening. Cody's listening to this probably, but and I wasn't going to tell him. But I'm. I think I'm interested in getting into coding, and getting into web development. So I've been doing a lot of. Um, courses and stuff and um i'm planning on going to a boot camp i think once i kind of get the basics down and i think that's what i want to do i've been trying it out for since i've been in um the states and i i actually really like it mm-hmm. i wasn't going to tell him i wanted to surprise him but i guess this is a good surprise <laughs> for him <laughs> okay i like that a coding boot camp okay uh, do, you, yeah. do you guys know do you guys know anybody in la um, I think he has a friend in LA. I think her name's Mia. And then I have a friend that lives pretty close to LA, but not in LA. Her name's Danielle. Do you do you feel like you've got a good uh, like community around you? You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my my family's pretty supportive of of anything I do. Um, and then Cody's been my main support in anything so i i do rely on him a lot for like that kind of support but my my family has been very my family loves cody without even like meeting him Mm -hmm. so okay so they're they're pretty supportive of everything okay so we're married for two years Mm -hmm. in germany we're going back to los angeles um Mm -hmm. Cody's going to become a cop. You're going to work at Starbucks. Um, we're going to hang out with Danielle. We're going to go take some coding classes. We're going to journal. We're going to meditate. Um, we're going to try to be a step mom of some kind. This sounds very personal, so if you don't want to talk about it or answer it, we can totally skip it and move on. But... um. Are are you kind of are are you you're hoping to eventually have a child of your own? Um, I'm not sure yet because so we we did have a child, but um she she passed away. Oh, I'm really sorry. So to hear I'm that. not sure. Well, it's, it's okay. I'm okay. That was in May, um, in 2020. Too so, pretty kind of recent, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. sure exactly like where where I feel about trying again. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. I go back and forth mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. But, um, we're, we're also thinking about adopting. I think we're gonna actually adopt for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, hey, you know, you should you should uh, hit up the two uh, the proxy marriage people and see if they'll <laughs> fucking have a kid for you. You know what? Probably. There's kids everywhere that need to be adopted. Hmm. Um. Okay, so you're thinking about adopting. I like that. That sounds that sounds nice. It sounds like being a mother is something you've you've really wanted to do. Yeah, I think I'd be a pretty good mother. I've been um, staying with my brother and his wife, and then they have a, a one-year-old niece. And just, like, being an auntie in itself is so fulfilling. And especially mm-hmm. after loss, too, I can see that. Um, I can uh, appreciate being an auntie. I can I can appreciate the roles that I have as, like, wife, auntie, sister, you know, mom, to a child that's not here anymore you know what i mean that mom yeah, of course i can course. Uh, appreciate the those um titles a lot more now i think because i get to hang out with my niece mm-hmm. also a niece is good because uh you can hang out with them and then when you don't want to anymore you send them away i can just do it i can say bye bye yeah see if you do that with like your actual kid apparently you're an asshole right <laughs> I can't just like leave them in the room upstairs by themselves. So you can do that. Good. You just can't leave them like on a dirt road or something like that. Yeah, but I want to do that to my niece either. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um. Well, listen. I think before we go, I just have one other. Are you Are you happy? Are you feeling excited about life and about? Where, where life has taken you so far and where it plans to take you in the future? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think especially after starting learning to code has been really exciting because I'm, I'm excited to see if I can actually get a career in it. And then, um, yeah, just it's just a new, it's a new year. That's how I'm feeling about it. It's a, it's a lot more optimistic than I've been for the last, like, six seven months so good um good yeah well um gina thanks for thanks for sharing your story this is this was this is fascinating very fascinating Thank you. obviously non-traditional <laughs> uh i think you know that yeah um but it's for good sure. that it that it worked out for you because i mean look life is so fucking crazy complicated and sometimes you make uh wild decisions to get married to a guy that you've you know haven't even <laughs> met but then the f- i mean fuck you know sometimes those those decisions lead you to a place where you're feeling good about life and that's, that's yeah really all that that's matters. kind of why i did it too is why i married him too was because it's like my whole thing was like why not why not like what like the worst that could happen is um he could be a murderer i asked him many times before we met if he was a murderer but he he's not okay. and um but then also right, it's like so why you, would he you did you did you did your that research work? that's good yeah but like why would he like pay for all this stuff like for me to be able to go be with him and everything if he was like a murderer like what kind of mo is that but then also it's like um right. That wouldn't yeah, be a very not? good ROI. Right. So I was like, why not? Like, let's take a chance on love. Well, Gina, thank you for sharing all this stuff. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, If you're scared to do something, think, like, why not? Why not try, you know? And um, love, love your kids, love your family. And um, shout out to Cody, I love you, dude. Um, and Jack, we love your we love your show. We listen to it on oh, road trips thanks, all man. the time. Hell yeah, I'm honored to be. Um, I feel like I'm part of the family. You are. You definitely I'm like are. Your, <laughs> I'm like your pet gecko. For real. Yeah, we love you. We love you, Gek. Hey, thank you, Gina. You guys have a good night. Yep. You too. Bye. Fascinating. I feel like I've talked to a lot of callers uh, like that who have like made these wild jumps, um, and I don't know. I'm I'm always back. Look, 
because here's the thing, I'm going to be honest. When she told me that uh, she uh, married this guy in a different country that she had never met before after two months. Yeah, of course, I thought that was insane. Of course. But here's the thing is I, 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 people have told me a lot of this stuff, especially with stuff with like relationships and whatnot, you know, of, of wild decisions of, of, of life rearrangements and, and whatnot that seem crazy. Um but I don't know. I, I I think the bottom line is whether or not you're happy as a person being alive in the universe. Uh, are you content? Are you not in, in constant t- t- fucking dread or unhappiness or whatever? Like, I mean, these are, these are bottom line things. And um, I don't know if I if I ask someone. If they're feeling happy and good about their life, and they say that they are, uh, then I, I don't know how how crazy their decision really was, right? Like life's complex that way. There are no. Uh, I'm not gonna say there's no bad decisions. There's plenty of bad decisions. There's, uh, there's lots and lots, in fa- an infinite number of bad decisions. But they could all lead you to an infinite number of places. Very trippy. Thanks for calling, Gina. Hello? Hi there. Oh, hey, uh, hey, Lyle. How's it going, man? Oh, my goodness. How's it going? Uh, I'm alive. For I'm going to be dead for uh, most of all of the time. And I'm in the tiny little window mm-hmm. where I'm not dead. And that's awesome. I think that's so cool. Like I'm gonna be dead for millions. I'm gonna be dead for infinity amount of time, and I was dead yeah, for true. infinity amount of time before that. And I'm like in a, the microscopic uh-huh. window where I get to breathe and uh, eat nutter butter bites and uh, drink water. Yeah. So I'm actually really stoked about that. How are you doing? Um, when you when you put things like that, I'm a lot better than uh, I'm a lot better than normal. You know. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm, I'm really happy to be here right now. Um, okay, great. Well, is there anything else you wanted to talk about, or did we kind of did we kind of do it? I think we did it, man. Um, it's been an honor talking to you, and um, I love you, Jake. It says here that you told your wife that she can have your skull <laughs> when you die, and that she was thrown off by that. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, I don't know. How do I start this? She has like a memorial shadow box for a dog she used to have that has, you know, like skeletal remains in it. Um, and then I told her I want to do it with the dog we have now. Like we want, I want his skull. And, uh, she wasn't jazzed up about that, which brought up the skeleton in my closet um which is that when i die i wanted to give my skull to her so there seems to be a disconnection in my understanding of her i don't know um love for the oddities i guess all right i have several questions yes well first of all it says here that you're 26 years old and so is she that's correct so, I mean, when do you think you're going to die? Um, I I don't have any reason to think it's going to be soon. Uh, maybe when I'm like 100 is the goal. That we use you think you're going you think that you and your wife are going to live to 100 years old and be married? That's a good time? goal. Yes. For sure. I mean, I hope so. Good to have hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, not that we're planning for dying soon or anything, but it just kind of came up. I don't know. It's, I, I got like a weird, I have a weird thing with like an affinity for, for skulls. Um, so I just look at it as like a very like personal deep gesture and it's kind of how I want to go. And she didn't like it. And I don't know. Part of me feels like I have a right to be put on my own mantle, even after I'm gone. 
Never tell anyone that you will give them something when you die, because it makes them want to kill you so they can get it. Oh, it's like a ploy. Let me talk to your wife. Sorry. Here she is. Hello? Hi, Tiffany. Hi. What is the plan? For what? Uh, why were you thrown off that your husband offered to give you his skull? Um, well, I think having his skull after he dies is scary and creepy, and I wouldn't be able to, you know, live waking up and seeing, like, his skull somewhere, and, like, knowing that his face used to be there, but it's not there anymore. It's just his skull. You know what's gnarly is you wake up and see his skull every day. I do, but it's, you know, he has his eyes and his teeth and his nose and like all the cartilage and everything's there. And it's, you know, it's different. Okay, so apparently you like, so I mean, look, the thing behind all of this is that you keep bags of dog bones. And so your husband was like, all right, this, she's, in, she's into dead bone stuff because she, ha- she hangs out with dead dogs all the time. So maybe she'd want to hang out with dead me. <laughs> so apparently, and apparently he felt as though that was within your character and that's throwing him off. What's your response to that? So, yes, I have... Um... The, you know, I had a dog before got, uh, Oreo. dog drawer. So I have his, yeah, so I have his remains. <laughs> um, but there was just one time we were talking and, and uh, my husband said that he would take our dog now, Archie's um, head. And I said, no. I was like, no, why would we do that? I wouldn't want to see Archie's head like mounted on our wall. So then he said, well, I want to give you my skull. And I was like, well, same thing. Why would I want to have your skull mounted on my wall? That's, it's freaky. I don't, mm -mm, I can't do that. Hmm. So, so then how are you, why is it that you couldn't do that, but you have, you already have a dead dog thing? Well, because the, the dog is cremated. (laughs) (laughs) I don't see, like, his skull. Oh. (laughs) Jake. No, No, wait. Wait, are you lying? Hold on. Jake, if what she's telling me is true, I don't know where the... I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because a cremated dog... No, it's not true. It's not true at all. Now she's hiding the truth. She has, like... She has his teeth in there and his fur. Uh, I think she even has some toenail trimmings. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's not the same. That's not the same at all. <laughs> J- Jake, Wait, that's like no, saying no, the Jake, no. Jake, Jake, Jake. That's like if you got your grandmother cremated and had like an urn with her ashes and you thought the person that kept that was into oddities. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. First of all, you are in oddities. Having an urn of your drive. grandmother's ashes does not make you into but, oddities. No, no, but yeah, but the wow, here's the here's the thing. Do you like would you keep the dentures with it? I mean, she her dog's her dog's teeth are in there for crying out loud. And the fur <laughs> and toenail. Why training. are you I looking mean, inside of this thing? It, it's no 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 no. The okay. cremation is in the box. So the I have is, yeah. yeah, I have two separate um like components to mem- like memorialize my dog. Um, one is the actual box that has his cremate- cremated remains. And then the other box is a shadow box that has like pictures of him. It has a piece of his collar and it does have a- two little jars. One-, <laughs> one jar has fur in it and the other jar has a tooth of his. No, no toenails. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how about instead of a skull, you take like a, some clippings of a T-shirt, 
and some of his pubes and put it in a little Dixie cup, oh. and that could be the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. could I could do that. Some some hair and some beard hair, sure, mm-hmm. but not his skull. Okay, have we found a, a good compromise, John? Jake? Uh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I can I can settle on that. Uh, like, I don't know. Maybe that's good. Maybe, like, just a, <laughs> a cut of his hair, but uh, I think that would... I wouldn't... Not the pubes. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> So you guys think you're going to get be married for 74 years? Oh. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Well, I, I, I hope so, too. Thanks, Lyle. Yeah. What if, now, Tiffany, what if you die first? Does Jake get to keep your leg? What does he get? Oh, um... Yeah, he can take my arm if he wants to. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'd be about that. I'd, I'd mount it over the over the fireplace. I'm that, like genuinely. You know what? Now I see what you guys see in each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a good partnership. If nothing. Is else. there anything else you guys want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, if it's cold outside, then don't leave the dogs outside. And, uh... Um, I feel like that was some reverse really psychology nice. on your part, because you're trying to go and collect more dog skulls. Oh, don't, yeah, don't, don't tell people. Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. I didn't let I I I realized I didn't let Tiffany say her thing, but it's okay. She'll be dead soon. So will I. So will he. So will all the dogs in the universe. When I die, everyone listening to this can have. I'm gonna get cremated, and everyone listening to this can have one speck of ash. Hello. Hello. Is this Lyle? Yeah, who is this? This is Elmo. Yo, your your uh, whole music about sent me into psychosis listening to that shit for an hour, man. Okay. Well, whose decision was that? That was definitely your decision for going live. What? I don't know. What's up, man? Okay. Um, nothing much. What uh what is it you wanted to talk about today? Uh, I wanted to tell you about how my father messaged me on Facebook like a month ago and told me like out of nowhere because he doesn't talk to me because, you know, he's on like drugs and shit. He just messaged me and goes, I just want to let you know that you're the only child that I plan to concede. I was on magic mushrooms and I just wanted to discuss that a little bit. Um. Okay. Well, how did that make you feel when he messaged you that? Oh, it made me feel kind of powerful, to be honest, because not many people can say that, you know, they were like tripping balls swimming out of their dad's wiener, you know, like that's pretty, um, pretty in- interesting, I think. So you feel as though the f- your this revelation from your father that you were conceived while on magic mushrooms um, has been um, has made you feel powerful. Oh, yeah. I feel like it's um, definitely changed my outlook on life since I figured this out. Okay, how so? I feel like I could be like, well, to be honest, a lot of like crazy incidental stuff happens to me pretty often. And I, I used to be really curious why. I mean, I've dibble dabbled in psychedelics myself. I don't really love mushrooms. To be honest, I hate magic mushrooms. Okay. Um, but I just felt like, I don't know. I just feel like it changed the way I look at life once I figured that out. Because now it's like the world is my oyster. If I was conceived on magic mushrooms, what else can I do? Well, you didn't really do that. Well, I came out of his weeder. You d- all right. Me. I guess that you that was sort of you. Um, all right. So if yeah, you could have like, been like conceived, 
worked on magic mushrooms, what else could you do? I, I mean, what do you want to do? What do I want to do? What do you want to do? To be honest, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I haven't All figured right. that out yet, man. I've just can been I... kind of raw dogging life. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Go ahead. Uh, the Go fact ahead. that you, if you don't know what you want to do, the fact that you can do anything is meaningless. You know, I feel like, um, I mean, yeah, what well, if you, yeah, of course you could do anything, but you only really can, you can choose from a lot of different things, but you can only really do a finite amount of things with the amount of time you have on earth. But with that finite amount of time, you can do You can do a lot. Right, right. So I mean, all right. So hold on. You know, just get yeah. just one. Give me, give us one thing. Give us one thing that you want to do. One thing I want to do. I want to see the world. I want to see the different cultures and how everyone lives their life in different countries. That is a life okay. goal. Okay. Okay, it's a great goal. It's a great goal. All right, let's narrow it down. Give us a culture. Give us a country. All right. I want to go to Egypt and see the pyramids and. Yeah, experience that. I feel like seeing what the Egyptians built or the aliens or wh whoever built those freaking huge pyramids. I want to see that shit in person because in pictures, I feel like it just doesn't do it justice. I need to be there. Okay. All right. Well, so what's stopping you from going and seeing the pyramids? I think it's like two grand. Um, right. Money. 100% money, you know? It's money. That's, that's okay. the one thing that you can't just have, you know? That's right. what stops a lot of opportunities and a lot of things from happening is money. It's true. It's true. Um, mm -hmm. Imagine if there was just an abundance of that. Then everyone would be doing everything, though. Do you... Um, how do you make money right now? I, I'm at work right now, actually. I work at this warehouse that makes uh, aerospace parts. You, you make fucking spaceship parts? Like, like, like parts for the government and stuff. Honestly, I don't really know what the fuck I do. I just, I put tape on shit and painter paints it and then we ship it out to the government. Yeah. All right. How, um, do you make good money doing that? Fuck no. I'm trying to find a new job because they don't pay very well. But I mean, okay. I get to like sit and talk on the phone. So that's, that's kind of nice. There's, there's those pleasures you... that come with, you know. Yeah. Do you, um... Let's see here. You live in Florida? Where in Florida do you live? I live near Tampa. Okay. Are you coming to Tampa? I thought I heard you say that. I'm coming to Tampa. I'm coming to the Tampa Improv, I Fuck think. Fuck yeah, baby. Um, Fuck yeah. All right. Hold on. All right. Let's see. A flight from Tampa to Cairo, Egypt. Oh, you're looking it up for me. I'm looking it up for you. Uh, it's yeah, it's a thousand bucks, and then whatever your your Airbnb and your trend and your food and the sea and the thing is yeah all right two thousand bucks feels appropriate. Um, okay, I have a question for you then because you've done a lot of traveling alone. How is that experience? Uh -huh. Do you enjoy it or do you wish you had somebody who went with you? Oh my God, go alone. Have you never been alone before to a place? Um, no. I really haven't traveled much, like, generally in the U.S. Like, I've only been, like, my home state and in Florida and, like, drove through a couple of states. But I haven't haven't really even seen – I th I think it's, like, just the fear of, of being somewhere alone that scares me, to be honest. That's probably what's stopping me. It's not even the money. Because $1,000, um, that's that's really nothing if you think about it. Okay. Do, do you feel like you – how long do you think it would take you to save up 2000 bucks? Probably a couple months, not too long. All right, and then you need a, you'd probably want like you know at least a week or or five days, however long. You'd probably want it. Like, would you be able to find the the time to do it? Ooh, the time. The time. I think the I would need part. a lot of money. A, yeah, that I think time is probably just as close to the money thing about the impossibilities of life, really. Um, yeah, I course. think I would need enough money to be able to quit my job, go to Egypt, and then mm. come back to a new job because I don't have any mm -hmm. PTO left. But I feel like Do that you... right there would be yeah. the fresh start that I need. 
Yeah, the fresh start that you need. Okay, so how long have you been working at this job for? Uh, only like six months. All right. Well, fuck them. Um, yeah, I blew through. I blew through all my PTO because I thought I was actually going to move to South Carolina, and then I got scammed after I packed my whole life up with my grandma. We moved up there, and the apartment we were supposed to move into was all fucked up, and so we had to just move back down to Florida and be homeless for a month. So I'm just now kind of getting my feet back on the ground. Yeah. Um, but I, I like uh, soft, soft ghosted my job because I wanted my uh, Christmas bonus. So they didn't even know I quit. So I think, see, that's another thing with the magic mushroom thing. I feel like I predicted my own destiny to not quit my job so I could come back and still have a job. I don't ever want to, uh, I don't, I don't like, um, I feel like a dick every time I do this when I, you know, try to disregard spiritual things, but you, you don't predict what you do with yourself. You do it. Mm-hmm. You can just make decisions. Elaborate. But some you're saying that you predicted you yourself quitting you your made. job. That's a good point too. This is why I don't like saying. Mm, I predicted I'm wrong. my. No, no. I wouldn't say. All right, wrong. I want to help I you. I'm gonna have different opinions. Let's talk for a couple more minutes because uh, I want to try to help you with this. Um, all right. How do you get enough money in time to go to to go to Egypt? How much money do you have right now? Like, do you have savings? Uh, I have a little bit of savings, but you know, the whole move into South Carolina and then right back to Florida thing kind of blew through that. I mean, I have uh-huh. close to a grand saved up, but life's expensive, okay. you know. I it feel is. like I'd have yeah. to get like a second job to just like put money to the side. But with that, yeah. I need more time. Would you ever move? to Egypt? Would you ever like move out of America? Uh, See, and I've also thought about that myself. I would love to move out of America, but I'm like a mass presenting lesbian and so I feel like I would have to do like a lot of research on where I would be safe and I don't know like Egypt's culture around, you know, homosexuality. Probably I'm from... I want to, you know, get myself... Uh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. No, sure, sure. No, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. I I don't I don't want to say anything bad about Egypt because I don't really know. But like, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't cool with that. Right, right. Which is all power to them. But I definitely would want to move to a progressive country. Fuck America, though. I definitely want to get out of here. Okay, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I listen. I here's what I'll say. I think if you did research, you could find a place that you was cooler with you being a mass. What did? What did you? How did you say a mass presenting lesbian? Yeah, look at you. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, there's Berlin, but that's it's also expensive. I'm trying to think of, like cheaper places that you could go to. I oh I just can I just say this Elmo but just don't be afraid to do something crazy, you know. Mm, yeah. How do you just do something crazy though without like overthinking it to the point that it's not even crazy anymore though? <sighs> what I'm trying to think of is of a crazy thing because you want to travel and go do things, um, but there are the physical limitations of time and money, and. Um, I don't know. I'm like, where could you go where, like, you could do one of those, like, volunteer programs where they, like, take you places and you do shit and they give you a bed and food and shit. None of those exist. Um, oh, you know what? I have been considering just joining the Peace Corps. I don't really know what the fuck that is, but I, I, sure. I've heard people talk about the Peace Corps and it seems cool. Don't know what, what yeah. they do, but I'm with it. You know? I just okay yeah, yeah I just don't be I guess the, my thing about the massive crazy thing is that you're 23 right mm-hmm. okay and you don't have a kid no all right so do you have like any mat do you have like any massive debt like fucking student loans or anything yeah I'm I have a I have pretty bad student I'm about a 40 grand in debt right now have like okay. a car payment and stuff like that. That's also okay. another thing about just like dropping everything and going somewhere, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I'm thinking about that. 
Um, is it student debt or how much is the car payment? Uh, I'm, I still owe about 18 grand on my car and about 20 okay. grand in student debt. Okay. All right. You know how many times I've Googled the words how to get rich fast? I'd say yeah, probably at yeah, least yeah. weekly. Uh, what do you, uh, what'd you get your degree in? Oh, I never finished. I was, I went to school for art and then I dropped out halfway through cause I was like, well, yeah. in order to make a career out of this, you got to be either a teacher or a therapist. Yeah. And I don't really know if I want to do either of those things. I think I'm just indecisive. <sighs> yeah. I think that's my problem. Yeah. Fuck it. I, I, you know what? Fuck. I hate, I hate college so much. I really hate it. I think it's like a weird predatory thing <laughs> to like. Have people pay you years of salaries to fucking? Uh, it's just it just sucks. I don't like it. Um, I agree, and especially like after COVID, and everyone kind of realized that you can learn all the same shit online. Of course. It's like, why are people still attending these massive universities when you can get the same shit on on the internet? You know? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna think on this for you, um, Elmo. I'm gonna think on this. There's a plan here. There's there's something. I you're not I don't you're not gonna die before you get to travel the world. <laughs> it might be slow. It might be a long it might be a longer process than you'd like it to be, but I, there's we we can get there. I think we can get there. I think so too, Lyle. I do. Okay, I just good. think it requires more patience than I might yeah. have. Yeah, you might have to be patient because you got all that debt and you got to find a fucking thing. You could pay it all off, but you'll get. You have enough time to burn because, like, you know, I, I mean, look, you could spend the next three years trying to get out of that debt and put yourself in a position where you do have the money and the time, and then go do all this shit when you're 26, and then you're still a you're still a young person traveling the universe. So it's right. there. You might just have to be but more patient. But also, when it comes it. to debt and stuff like that, like, like who, who even cares about that? Because everyone dies with debt anyway. So I might as well just add on to the pile. I guess that's not really a healthy way to look at it. But I mean, everyone dies with the hell of debt. Sure. Four grand really isn't even that much compared. You to You could have children, you know? and that way, when you die, there you they can pay your debt for you. Honestly, I feel like it's what needs to be done. I feel like that would be like my last hurrah. On earth just passing yeah. my debt on to the next um well listen elmo is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go man i know that your podcast has gotten me through hours of just work and car rides and i really appreciate everything you do this 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 podcast is a really good platform for people to just speak their mind and i appreciate you thanks man good luck to you i hope you achieve your dreams yeah, of course, you too. Uh, stay gack out there. God bless you.